Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Scott Sugden. I am Product and Technology Outreach Manager here at All Acoustics. And today we've got a great presentation all about Cara 2, the dawn of a new Cara. Uh, today, uh, introducing Cara 2 to you guys, I have Germain Simon coming to us from Lyon. Germain, how is everything in Lyon? Oh, uh, Jamal, your mic is muted. This is the uh, first beer penalty of the day, Jamal. Uh, it's good. I was already thirsty anyway, so I'm sure you were. Although it's a bit of the morning for you. So um, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Um, very glad to be here today with you presenting CARA 2. Uh, things are good in Lyon. Uh, there are um, a lot of uh, good, hopeful news are coming up from uh, government friends. So um, hopefully we'll... Uh, soon see each other be able to see each other and uh crossing my fingers onto that actually because uh it's been quite some time now we're all blocked at home <laughs> and looking at screens on the webinars and all that <laughs> excellent well thank you jamal for uh joining us today um real quick before we get started i do want to introduce we have uh four experts with us to help answer questions live in the q a um i believe uh just a uh, short uh, drive away from you uh by car or train Arno, it's uh, nice to see you as well. Arno, thanks for joining us today. Um, you're going to help answer some questions in uh, English and French, correct? Yeah, hi Scott. Hi Germain. I can barely see you, Germain. If I look, if I look from at the horizon, you're really close <laughs> to me, but uh, still too far. I'm, wa to, to I'm waving at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still too far. Uh, happy to have you all, guys. Yes, I will answer in English and French. Bonjour à tous. Réponse en français, si vous voulez. Bon, c'est bon webinar à tous. Thank you, Arno, and I like the haircut a lot. It's uh, very stylish. Um, definitely fits the uh, the mood right now. Uh, hopefully, you're uh, you uh, tipped your. That's all I can uh, do myself. I can't do. I, yeah. I can't do more myself. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. Thank you. Thank you, Arno. Um, Josh, you're the next one. I'm expecting to have a new haircut soon. Um, uh, so it's uh, any day now in Michigan. I expect uh, it's good to see you, Josh. Yeah, good to see you as well. I uh, I don't think I've had a haircut in over a year, so uh, starting to feel uh, a little a little crazy. But um, yeah, glad to be here. Excellent, um, Josh. You'll be able to obviously answer questions uh, in English. And uh, Josh is our house of worship specialist. Uh, you deal specifically with house worship installs around uh, North America and more. Um, so, guys, if you have any questions about that specific market, don't hesitate to ask Josh himself. Um, heading over to London, um, let's get Sergey on the phone here or on the. Uh, this the uh, what the chat sergey it's uh, nice to see you as well thanks for joining us hello everyone good morning good evening good evening good afternoon um welcome uh привет всем сегодня говорим о каре задавайте вопросы Excellent. Thank you, Sergey. And last and definitely not least, uh, heading all the way to Berlin. We're crisscrossing and getting our air miles up for the year. Uh, Martin, it's good to see you. Thank you for uh, being a part of this webinar today. Yes, hello. Hello from Berlin. Uh, not like I know, I didn't cut my hair, so they're getting longer and longer. After the end of this Corona shutdown, Probably I will look like a hippie while other ones are perfectly shaved by the kids. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Für alle Deutschen, ich werde auch Fragen gleich im Chat in uh, Deutsch beantworten und von mir aus dann auch auf Deutsch nochmal ein herzliches Willkommen. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, Martin. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, Germain, I'm going to hand it off to you um, and uh, thank you for uh, taking the time today to let everyone know all about the benefits of CARA 2. Um, and here we go. All right, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, Scott. And um, once again, glad to everyone who's joining us today and also to everyone who will be watching this video on uh, YouTube later on, as these are all um, available from our YouTube channel. So don't hesitate uh, if you want to watch it again, uh, if you're not tired or hearing, uh, you know, French voice, uh, French accent and, uh, and French look, uh, don't hesitate to go back there and have a, a second look at it. All right, so we'll be talking about CARA 2 mainly today. Um, and as most of you must be aware by now, as we've introduced the product quite some time ago, um, CARA 2 is the evolution of CARA. We've granted CARA with Panflex, something that uh, you've been uh, used to using with K2, for instance, uh, basically to provide CARA with more flexibility. But um, 
I believe that uh, we should start a little bit at looking at CARA before understanding exactly what are the benefits of adding this Panflex um, to CARA. So um, CARA, talking about CARA is a bit like talking about a, a bit of a success story for Lacoustics. So, um, and actually we have to say that it's the enclosure that we sold the most within our catalog. And this means a great deal for us. It's one of our iconic products from a very long time ago. Uh, we've uh, actually from 2010 now, so 10 years ago, uh, we launched CARA and over 10 years, it's been positioned at, as a very strong leader into the eight inch format category of product. And this is for many reasons. This is for actually two or three reasons, mainly combined together that we managed to get that uh, leader position into the eight inch market. And I would say that uh, those three things are the design of the enclosure, uh, obviously the acoustic design, uh, the mechanics, design actually also how, how easy it is to fly CARA, how easy it is to manipulate CARA, to handling it, to store it, to stack it anywhere else, uh, taking up and down uh, in tours. Also aesthetics, I mean, it's uh, it has a special look uh, itself, especially with the fins, and even more enhanced now with the, uh, with the Panflex, I, I find myself that it has a little more of its character uh, to itself by adding those, those Panflex fins. So that's the first thing. And second is uh, how much output that the system can deliver for its size. And I would say the third, which is kind of a combination, uh, a bit of the, of the second one or so, is how much bandwidth the system could provide for its size as well. So all these three things together, the design, the output, uh, the bandwidth uh, of the Kara made it ex extremely um, uh, uh, loved or beloved, I would say, into this eight inch category. Um, and I think one one way to uh, to say that is to look at numbers. Right? We've sold 45,000 units uh, over the past 10 years in more than 45 countries. So we can say that it's it's also a best-selling uh, product, but globally, over the uh, the entire uh, uh, over the world, but over many types of applications as well as we will be able to see during this presentation. Um, but one thing that's really struck us uh, lately is that. Again, looking at numbers, um, 2018 was the year uh, where we sold most units of CARA. It was eight years after its launch, and it was about two years ago. So it, it really means something. It means that CARA definitely is not you know, dying or dead, or despite some, some rumors that can have been spread, uh, it's still a very leading product and still a very strong product on the market, uh, and still perceived as one of the best in class eight inch uh, format line source uh, on the market. But it, pro it proves that it's widely accepted. So um, riders uh, will have, or numerous riders will have carry on to it. Um, uh, the specifications, uh, specs for projects uh, based on consultant or design build projects will have carry on to it or uh, looking at the installation version of CARA maybe as well. Um, so there's quite some, a um, uh, lot of things that we could believe or that I've been told about uh, the, uh, the the death, I would say, or, or the slow, slow death of CARA. Uh, it's definitely not something that we see. Uh, and it actually almost uh, causes us to think a little bit how we could um, um, pursue the life of CARA. Uh, so it's because of the uh, the strength on the market of the CARA, it was, uh, we need to put a lot of thought about what we should do as a second life for CARA. Was that, was, was that gonna be a, a next product? Uh, so completely ending the life of CARA and then starting off with a brand new product, redesigning everything, um, or would that be something that's more non-disruptive uh, to the product, like a, a largely uh, perceived improvement to the product without being too disruptive? Um, and that's actually the road we preferred to take um, for many reasons. Uh, even if you look at the transducers and the mechanics and the enclosure itself of the CARA, we're still using the uh, top of the uh, market, uh, top grades components for the CARA. So there was not so much improvement we can do in there. So one way to greatly improve the use 
of camera, not necessarily the, the enclosure itself or anything, but it's mostly the application, the use of camera is to fit it with Panflex. Uh, Panflex is something that uh, people are aware of, people know from K2. It's the enclosure that introduced Panflex, which are adaptable, adaptable, user adaptable fins. So fins that can be opened up and closed down uh, using uh, just the fingers. So using specifically uh, just the, the, the uh, your users to opening up and selecting a specific range of, of presets that goes along with it. Um, but the reality of the Panflex is basically that it creates an enclosure with various directivity patterns. So you have the ability as a user, you have the ability with one single enclosure to obtain four different uh, coverage options for CAT. But it's not the only thing that's been improved with Panflex uh, when we fit it into CARE. Um, so directivity is improved, but also the polar response has been improved greatly. And you'll notice that it brings also an additional SPL capability when we be using a, a specific setting of those pre, uh, of those Panflex. So it's just not it's, it's not just one small addition. It's actually taking the same uh, um, key selling product that we've uh, been uh, proposing for ten years, and granting. Uh, rental companies with the ability to improve their inventory management by owning an enclosure that can be a four in one enclosure, if you will. Uh, but it also reinforces the uh, or extend the lifetime of CARA. It uh, reinforces the uh, inter international recognition of CARA by fitting it with even more flexibility, with even more capability. Uh, but it's also a great way to extend the lifetime of CARA. So let's have a look at uh, what are the possibilities in terms of Panflex. Panflex goes with 110 degree symmetrics, so that's the very same uh, uh, characteristics that you know with Cara, but also with 90 degrees on one side, 90 degrees on the other side, and a 70 degree symmetrical aspect as well. So going from 110 symmetric to 70 symmetric, or 90 symmetric left, or 90, as 90 asymmetric, excuse me, right. Uh, as you can see in the in the uh, video here, it actually shows uh, a little bit of improve uh, of differences between the uh, each preset. So it's not only the coverage that is changed, but it's also the uh, output reference to the nominal 110 degrees. Uh, looking at it, for instance, the 90 degree uh, asymmetric, either right or left, will provide you with an additional one dB. Uh, and more specifically, the 70 degree. Direct setting for CARA 2 will grant you with an additional 2 dB. So that's a great improvement into uh, the overall uh, output capacity, and which was already one thing that made CARA the best in class product. Uh, we pushed a little bit more, even further the limits into uh, providing even more SPL for CARA. Um, but it's also a matter of uh, controlling the directivity. Of course, uh, you, you know that uh, you will be able to adapt the uh, coverage of your CARA to your room geometry, either using the 90 degree to focus the energy inward. In, uh, for instance, I want to avoid a, uh, a side wall which is a bit more reflective. I want to control the energy and send it towards the inside of the venue rather than sending to the side wall. Uh, but it's also uh, controlling the energy down to 800 hertz. So it means that you grant a, you've been granting CARA to with even more control of the directivity. Uh, polar response uh, improvement, we've been discussing about that. It's basically how stable your response is over uh, the germ over the coverage or the, the the dispersion cone of your CARA, and that has been greatly improved compared to CARA one. And this is due to the electronics settings that are now combined with this uh, uh, with this Panflex mold, if I can say, with this uh, user adjustable Panflex mold. So. Before getting into a bit more of this presentation, uh, Sky, why not showing it to what it actually means in terms of SPL coverage into Sandvision? 
which is, I believe, one of the best way to actually look at how we can propagate energy in a venue. It's looking at sound vision. Cool. Yeah, thanks, Jamal. Um, let me uh, pop this up on screen here real quick. Um, so we can take a look in sound vision and understand how easy it is actually to um, switch with. Let's just see if that works. Yep. Voila. And voila. Cool. So you guys should be seeing now my sound vision application here. And uh, what I've actually done is just built a, a really simple flat floor. It's approximately 55 meters deep. And I've put an array in of eight Kara 2, um, just covering it. And I just want to show you guys what we can do with PanFlex to actually change and modify the coverage and throw of the system. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just real quickly go into uh, uh, coverage mode here. Pardon me, uh, uh, coverage mode, and take a look at this is a Kara 2 array, all set to PanFlex of 110 degrees. So actually in the loudspeaker data toolbox, you can select the horizontal opening angle and set it to either 55 symmetric or 35 symmetric or 90 left, pardon me, uh, uh, 55 on each side symmetric, 35, which is 70 degrees, 90 left or 90 right. Um, and, uh, uh, and that's always from the perspective of the box. So if you will, when we look at it from this back angle, it's going to be 90 one way or 90 the other. And I'll, I'll show that in a second. What's really interesting is in 110, first off, you see how smooth the coverage is in the horizontal. We have a nice wide coverage angle. Um, we can also see it's SPL over the audience here, just with this initial set of angles uh, versus our coverage. And I can set all the angles to 35 degrees and see how much both that changes the throw capability and it narrows up the coverage. And, and that's quite obvious here because I've got the SPL mode in step, so it's every 3 dB as a color, and it's really quickly easy to see how wide this coverage can be versus narrow. And that's just toggling between these two modes. So having a pan flex on Kara 2 gives you that really nice tool to quickly narrow that out, but it also gives you more throw to the back, right? It helps push energy to the back, which is really cool. And we can also switch then to this is going to be 90 left. So we're going to have the 55 on this side, right? And voila, we can see that the energy steers to one direction. And we can also do that exact opposite and steer the energy to the other direction. So all of that's possible within one enclosure. So one loudspeaker in your rental inventory or one loudspeaker at your install can have four different coverage angles. You guys don't have to actually buy multiple speakers to do that. So the next question you need to ask yourself is how hard is it to change this? Um, the nice thing is there's no uh, no screw required here at all. Um, I've actually got a Kara 2 here as an example. Um, to change this, I just need two fingers and you get that nice enjoyable click or schlack or clack, however you want to call it. And now this box is at 70 symmetric. Now it is at 90 to the right, 90 to the left, or 110. So simple as that, and we've actually modified a Kara 2 from four different possible coverage angles um, and uh, uh, and set that to go in a multiple different ways. Um, Jamal, I'm going to kick it back to you. Um, so if you want to pop your your screen up there, we'll get you going. Yep. Excellent. Cool. All right. So. Um, Summarizing the little uh, thing that we've seen quite shortly would be um, uh, so Cara is now Cara 2 is now a four in one enclosure. So that's optimizing rental inventory, uh, making much easier for um, rental companies to manage their inventory. You, you go on site, uh, you don't have to think whether uh, you get the, the right uh, tools to change the, uh, the settings, uh, to change the coverage if you need to. Um, so uh, the, the venue is not exactly the same as you've seen it uh, in the drawings or, in, or even in your sound vision model. Well, it's as easy to change in real life as it, as it is in sound vision, as you could see with uh, with with cut there. Um, so that's that's a great uh, way to um, uh, improve the management of, uh, of your inventory of product. Uh, different directivity means also uh, adapting more adaptability. So you, you can have your system and adapt it to any type of geometry of your venue you have. And a bit more SPL uh, tends to reinforce uh, again Kara's position as the uh, leading product into the 8-inch uh, category. Uh, 
but we do, do not want to leave that uh, outside to only the the people who will be uh, purchasing Kara 2 or to companies who will be purchasing Kara 2, but give that ability for Kara owners to benefit for all of these uh, updates, for, to benefit from all of these great advantages by changing or updating their Kara into Kara 2. And that's done by an upgrade kit. So the upgrade kit is actually is, is as simple as the uh, Panflex molds and a Kara 2 sticker. So uh, you'll notice that it's not uh, not much change there. Obviously, there is a bit of um, uh, electronics change to be done, but that's transparent and that's within any network manager already of the of the firmware from the amplified controllers. Um, so a, a great way to uh, rejuvenate a little bit your Kara, if you will, uh, making it uh, extending its life into Kara too. So uh, really extending the lifetime. Like lifetime, sorry, of Kara uh, into many more years to come, and reinforcing these uh, these um, uh, cross rental capabilities, reinforcing the rental network of Kara uh, and its position for Kara. So that's that's a great deal for everyone, whether um, uh, Kara owners already or future uh, Kara owners, knowing that everyone will have the same type of product and will be uh, ready to for um, cross rental possibilities worldwide. Actually. All right, so let's get uh, a bit more into uh, the Kara 2 performance and has uh, uh, not much has changed in terms of components, uh, no, uh, except for the Panflex molds. Uh, we have a double eight inch uh, enclosure. Uh, we have a high output three inch compression driver that's loaded on a dedicated uh, DOSC waveguide, uh, which is the basis of the WST at, at L Acoustics. Um, it provides 142 dB of SPL uh, uh, using the Kara 2 presets at 70 degrees and has a bandwidth of 55 to 20 kilohertz. So quite a lot of bandwidth. It's actually a modular line source. Uh, modular line source means that uh, you can use Kara on its own or you can combine it with the companion subwoofer, which is the SB18. And that has kind of um, uh, great benefits uh, if you for integration purposes, for instance, or for application purposes. Uh, there may be applications where you do not need the full uh, bandwidth of a full range system. Uh, you need vocal reinforcement. You need uh, musical reinforcement with light, um, uh, low frequency reinforcement requirements. Um, but basically, you have something that provides you with the t with the uh, bandwidth. Uh, necessary to cover all these aspects. And if you need to combine, if you need to bring a little bit of, a, of the low uh, reinforcement, then you can combine it uh, acoustically, of course, but even mechanically using the SB18, mechanically with the same, uh, with the same line. So, uh, you know, the, the objective has uh, always been to design loudspeaker with a high SPL per enclosure, uh, but more specifically, specifically, excuse me, high SPL per meter of line source, because this is how we define uh, the true output capability of a line source. But to, we'll get a little bit more into that for, on the next slide. Um, uh, so the idea is to get the, the highest SPL, but also the highest bandwidth for uh, a, a single enclosure. And this is always a compromise. This is always a, um, a decision to get more output SPL, but less bandwidth, or to get more bandwidth, but with a limited amount of SPL. That's always a, a compromise that companies, uh, manufacturers have to make uh, when they design a product. With Kara, the, the desire was to be able to provide almost a full range capable product on its own. And you can see it goes down to 55 Hertz, giving it uh, a very robust uh, behavior into the low end, um, even when used on its own. And not making uh, quite a lot of, um, of um, uh, say, compromises in terms of output SPL, because as you can see on the screen with uh, this kind of numbers, 142 dB, we're positioned as the uh, top uh, in the market in terms of SPL per line length. And we'll discuss that right now. So SPL in terms of line length, what does it mean basically? Well, this is a good metrics 
to um, uh, to define the capacity of a line source. Uh, uh, talking about SPL per enclosure uh, can be a bit misleading because we have to take uh, into account. SP I'm talking here for the line source world or the line array world. Uh, we have to take into consideration that we will um, combine multiple and assemble multiple elements together. And it's just at one specific point in the audience. Uh, it's not only one element that creates a amount and output or, or an SPL reading, if you will, but it's a combination of multiple elements. And this is actually the, all the basis of line source today, of line source coupling, um, which creates a coherent wavefront in order to propagate uh, um, greater um, a more coherent uh, wave all the way to the audience, creating more SPL and more clarity, more intelligibility, especially in the in the high end. Uh, so SPL per meter is is one way to um, uh, understand how much output can I get from one meter of line source, and this takes into account the size dimensions of the enclosure, and this is very important because this is exactly uh, how you can compare two line sources together. So looking at CARA2, uh, for instance, uh, we took, we said it was 142 dB output SPL for one enclosure. Uh, if you look at certain, uh, these graphs here on the right hand side of, of uh, the slide, we see a comparison of products with, with uh, typical of with um, identical or similar shaped dimension and type of use uh, with a, uh, a ranking of SPL per meter. And this is here where the uh, we can that we can actually talk about absolute throw. Absolute throw is kind of the similar term to SPL per meter. It's basically how much energy you will get at a certain distance from your speaker. So it, it, both terms are, are um, interoperable. Absolute throw is different whether you will use the 70 degree setting for uh, the CARA2 or whether you will use the 110 degree for the CARA2. And this is a great advantage that we'll see that will be you will be able to adapt also the SPL coverage using the, this method. So if I'm positioning at 40 meters away from the CARA2, I, I don't know, maybe I'm reading uh, 100, uh, let's say, uh, let's give a round number, let's, I'm reading 100 dB uh, using the 70 degree setting. Then if I turn those pound flex and open them up to create a 110 degree setting, then I will get 2 dB less, meaning that I will be leading to 98 dB. So that's absolute throw. In terms of absolute throw, relatively to other types of product, CARA is uh, top and is leading into the same uh, uh, into the same category of product. But then there is another uh, very interesting element of uh, line source coupling, but also what uh, helps us with Panflex is the relative throw. Uh, relative throw is is basically how much energy uh, what's the difference in performance from front to back of the audience. So it's the uh, uh, differences that you will get in terms of SBL from front to back. And while we want this to be as small as possible, uh, what we have with line source, uh, with variable curvature line sources uh, to uh, create the consistent or to create, to minimize this number is to adjust the inter-element angles of this product. So that's one great way of reducing these uh, differences between the front and back uh, responses, uh, front and back SPL points in the audience. Another way to do that is also using the Panflex settings. We know that there is a 2 dB difference, for instance, between 110 degree and 70 degree. So we are able to use the 70 degree for the furthest member of the audience and to use the 110 dB for the closest members of the audience. And this will create an organic uh, SPL consistency throughout your audience. So this again will minimize the difference in SPL from front to back. And that's again Panflex helping into the absolute throw, but Panflex also helping into the relative throw. And that also kind of defines the adaptability of the system. 
So depend, based on the shape of the geometry of your venue, you will be able to decide whether you need to use the 70 degree uh, preset or the 110 degree preset or even the 90 degree preset on either side. Uh, with on top of Panflex, uh, the vertical geometry of the venue, as I said, can be uh, used by mixing Panflex settings. Uh, we could also think about mixing 110 and 90, 110 and uh, 90 left or 90 right, uh, also 110 and 70 degrees as I exposed before, uh, but also it's, de it's defined by the interelement angles of a viable curvature line source. So very easily in the vertical domain, we can very, very um, uh, finely adapt the uh, coverage of our um, line source system with carrot in its panflex but also on the horizontal domain because we have canflex panflex giving giving us the ability to go from left to right or to open up or narrow the geometry we can decide to reduce the coverage or we reduce the energy sent to the side walls we can uh, decide to uh, minimize the overlap uh, when we use CARA2 as an outfill to a main system, we, we can use this 90 degree here again to reduce the overlap between those two systems. Uh, we can decide to use 110 degrees for close proximity um, uh, audience. We can decide to uh, use the 90 degrees to either um, adapt the geometry uh, to, to adapt the coverage to the geometry of the avenue or to just decide to throw the energy a bit further away. So there's uh, so many uh, different applications we can actually give CARA2, we can grant CARA2 now with uh, that it has Panflex. And uh, once again, I think one great way of um, looking at this is having a look at, look at sound vision and see how we improve the throw capability using the 70 degree preset and how we can create a more consistent coverage using a mix of 70 degrees and 110 degrees. Scott, do you want to show that? Yeah, let me uh, pop up Sound Vision here real quick on screen. And voila, I think it's there. All right. So what I've actually done here is um, we've got a simple little design of an outdoor, maybe festival stage um, with a throw of about uh, 60 meters or so to the back of the audience. We've got a nice raked audience here as well. So a flat seating section with maybe a set of, of of bleachers uh, or a raised audience stands, um, you know, pretty typical of a of a show for somewhere between uh, maybe five and ten thousand people, something like that. And what I'm going to do here is uh, uh, just kind of show to you how much we can gain some absolute throw or some energy at the back of the venue. So that's all about how much power we can get all the way in the back, um, just using Panflex alone. So I've got this array set um, with a set of mechanical angles, and we can see the SPL distribution is already quite good. Um, but my target was to be only minus 2.5 dB at the very back of the venue versus mixed position, which is right about here. And um, by setting the top, say, six enclosures to 70 degrees versus 110, we can achieve a better throw of SPL to the back of the venue um, versus if everything was at 110. And that's quite interesting because we're just using the narrowing of coverage which doesn't pose any problem here because we don't need the width of 110 degrees at that point. So we're just taking that panflex angle and we're narrowing it up, which takes the same amount of acoustic power from the transducers and covers a smaller area. Right? So that's how CARA2 achieves that remarkable throw capability is by taking the same acoustic power at 110, narrowing it to 70 degrees, we gain 2 dB. Uh, and that helps us get to the back of the venue really nicely. Let's go ahead and map this real quick. Voila, so front to back, we are now 90, almost 98% within our target, which is plus two and minus 2.5. That's quite remarkable um, front to back. And we can see the difference here. Uh, this is mono on one side. We have really nice even distribution. And if we were to set all of these to say 55 degrees, we can see in the back there, we lose about 2 dB in comparison. So it's exactly as we were talking about that difference between CARA and CARA 2 or between uh, 110 and 70. So it's quite a big improvement and that should really help out in applications where you need a little bit more throw or applications where you don't need the width of the coverage. Um, so that's that's a really nice uh, use case of CARA 2. Um, 
And and the nice thing for everyone out there is is if you know how to rig or fly a Kara, uh, it's it's almost exactly the same, right, Jamal? Exactly, actually. Um, so let me prove that by sharing my screen. Should be up now. Um, exactly. So we have the exact same mechanical uh, integration with Kara 2 than we had with Kara. Um, remember that very sleek uh, rigging system. It's a four point rigging system with um, um, four handles, uh, two on the side and two on the back, which really helps into uh, manipulating the uh, the enclosure for uh, storing for deploying up and taking down the system quite quickly and um, still have the same internal element angles you know ranging from uh, zero to ten degrees uh, instead of one degrees first and then five and seven point five degrees uh, so giving you quite a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, internal element angle and adapting it to your audience geometry um, two speak and connectors uh, on the back quite a lot of um, areas where the uh, are our um, protection systems to make sure that uh, if you take your uh, put your camera on the ground it's not the wooden cover cabinetry doesn't get to uh, crash down or um, anything so all of that time tested rigging system which was uh, uh, welcomed quite gladly actually by most of the users uh, which has been proved to be extremely efficient for mobile applications uh, again, no loose parts, all integrated in rigging system made a lot of a difference. I remember uh, people when we when we all uh, went from uh, DV Dusk for those who remember the product uh, to Kara, we had uh, this was a huge improvement, and that surely wasn't something we wanted to get rid of uh, in this uh, in this system. Um, once again, in terms of rigging, uh, same thing that for Kara, so we are able to fly up to 24 Kara 2 uh, with the main uh, M bump, so the main flying frame, or there is a smaller flying frames if you need to fly up to 6 Kara 2 only. Uh, still have the capability to connect uh, Kara 2 to K2 or K1, so that platform that you've been using uh, which is a Kara down K2 or Kara down K1. That's the very platform you've been using. You can use it with Kara 2 as well. Uh, that's uh, that's not a, um, an issue at all. Um, what's maybe new in terms, but that that actually was the uh, the same with Kara, uh, but maybe not communicated as well, is how uh, good uh, or resistant the product is. Uh, we we made uh, Kara 2 pass more tests that we used to uh, in the past, and actually um, the organization granted us with an IP55 rating for Kara 2 as well as a UV rating of 7, meaning that uh, it's quite resistant to either um, dust or water ingress, uh, also color shading or anything of the sort when it's too much exposed to the sun, has kind of a strong resistance to that. Um, actually passed the test of a, a meal standard uh, which is a military standard in the U.S. test, which assess equipment to uh, in extreme conditions, whether it's a, a cold, uh, very cold temperatures, uh, very warm uh, conditions, high humidity, changes in humidity, uh, solar exposure, but also um, uh, salt exposure as well. Uh, so quite a lot of um, effort has been put into making sure that this CARA system will withstand any type of um, uh, climatic uh, conditions you are in. All right, so let's uh, have a look at the system uh, of CARA 2. Uh, CARA 2 doesn't live on its own. There is a, an, an overall system that uh, surrounds CARA, and this is exactly the same with all our products. We're not considering one single product, uh, an improvement to Kara uh, while grading it with Panflex means other type of uh, R&D effort behind the improvement of Kara, which means uh, additional um, uh, presets has been created, and uh, we'll talk about that. So it means revision of combining of combination with presets in terms in terms of uh, acoustically um, uh, acoustic combination. Excuse me, and 
those required quite a lot of uh, thoughts, process, and efforts into redefining a little bit the uh, the Kara system, uh, be, without again being too disruptive compared to what we had before. So SB18, SB18 is still the subwoofer companion to Kara, which uh, gives you the ability to uh, gives you the ability to extend the bandwidth down to 32 hertz. Um, and uh, up to 108, uh, 38 dB, so perfectly well matching the Kara 2 with a ratio of 1 to uh, 3, so 1 sub to 3 Kara when in a coupled configuration, as you can see on the screen here. Uh, if you want to have the same, same type of contour output capability uh, in the low end in a decoupled configuration, meaning stacked subwoofer and flown uh, CARA, for instance, uh, the ratio becomes two to three. But there is also the solution to accompany CARA 2 with the uh, new subwoofer case 21 uh, or extend even the low frequency and, uh, and extend that to the very lowest um, uh, to the very lowest octave with SB28 and case 28. In that case, we'll be using Kara as a four-way system almost. So Kara 2 would be a two-way, uh, th a three-way with the SB18 and a four-way with the additional SB28 or case 28. Um, case 21 is one uh, subwoofer which is also acoustically uh, uh, compatible with Kara. It is not mechanically compatible with Kara, so uh, combinations are possible, but you will have to fly KS21 side by side or behind with Kara 2, um, which uh, we've we've done quite a lot of uh, demonstration with that and, in, uh, uh, and it works quite well, I must say. So I spoiled it a little bit uh, before, but electronics has changed quite a lot as well. The presets has been uh, completely reworked. Um, obviously, you're aware uh, uh, Panflex brings a lot more flexibility into the coverage, uh, but that's not only done by controlling uh, physically, I would say, the uh, the wave exiting the uh, waveguide, uh, the, uh, the WST waveguide, the DOSC waveguide, but it's also made by combining this um, physical configuration with presets, with electronic presets. Um, we have now, instead of having one Kara preset, we have now three Kara 2 presets. One which is will be used with the 110 setting of the Panflex, one for the 90 degree setting of Panflex, and one for the 70 degree setting of Panflex. So three different presets uh, that's, that can be loaded into LA4X, LA12X, LA8 as well. Uh, with the same ratio of uh, enclosure per uh, output channel of amplified controller. There's also presets for field the, um, configuration, for field deployment and downfield deployment. Uh, so you have a CARA 2 fee as well and a CARA 2 down K1 and a CARA 2 down K2. Um, those presets really, um, uh, those presets basically reproduce the 110 uh, cone dispersion, uh, so using the 110 physical settings of the Panflex, because in most of the cases you're dealing with a close proximity of the audience. So it makes sense that you want to use a wide cone of dispersion. So a lot of effort was put into having these presets recreated in order to give you a even more stable polar response and give you more control of the directivity. This is how we achieve the control down to 800 hertz, for instance. So as we can see with, uh, with Scott today, SoundVision is one great tool to uh, offer the best performance possible that you can get from Kara 2, uh, matching the uh, coverage and the design of your Kara 2 array to the, uh, to the needs of your show, of your application, to the geometry of the venue, or to uh, even using that as a tool to begin your, um, uh, your tuning, your calibration of your system, uh, which will continue to an network manager using M1. So with that network manager, you will be able to load the presets required into the amplified controller. So you will be able to load the Kara 210 or Kara 270 or 90 degree presets. Uh, and you will be able to equalize, you will be able to continue your calibration process into, um, uh, into M1. So I'm not going too much into details here on these two topics because there was a lot of the webinars made uh, great actually uh, demonstration webinars made on to and SoundVision and LA Network Manager. 
but maybe something that's a bit more uh, talkative is the applications possible with uh, with Kara. Um, so here I'm taking a, an example of a, a fan-shaped amphitheater, something we need to have a wide coverage. We need uh, the, the audience is quite wide, um, and it's often that we lack a little bit of the stereo imaging when we're in such configuration, uh, especially in systems that have uh, the response that goes down too far when on the extreme side of the coverage. It's, uh, it's, very, um, uh, it's very often that we have systems that uh, are not very stable into the polar pattern, which means that if you go off axis, the energy drops, the high end energy drops drastically and, and quite fast. Uh, this is not uh, this is something that's great about uh, the Kara to great deal with Panthex is that stability that it provides into those kind of a large area or wide uh, area um, audience. Right here in uh, another type of application, a, a shoebox concert hall, something we've uh, installed uh, lately, actually not so, far, not so long ago with the Kara 2 and taking the advantage of the 90 degree um, setting of the Kara 2. Um, actually, the, we also combined and uh, using the 110 degree for the last two enclosures. Uh, we used LA4X to be able to pair Kara 2 per output channel of LA4X or per, per pair of output channel of Kara 4, of LA2, LA4X, uh, which give us the ability to uh, adjust every two enclosures uh, separately. Uh, which is a, a great deal of refinement into adapting or shaping your HF uh, frequency responses, your consistency and stability of HF throughout your audience. Uh, and in that, uh, in this very room, we were able to use the 70 degree preset for the uh, six first enclosures and the 110 degree preset for the last two enclosures. Um, Two things uh, we were, uh, two benefits of that is first, we were able to project the energy all the way to the uh, furthest rows, which was seated at 42 meters of the stage, uh, which was quite of a, a long way already through, but the 90 degree, the 70 degree narrow coverage gives us the additional 2 dB. So we get more clarity, we get more intelligibility all the way to the back of the venue. Reducing a lot the uh, energy sent to the sidewalls, so diminishing the uh, um, all the um, reflective environment, uh, making sure that we maximize direct energy over reflective energy. Once again, making sure that uh, we get clarity, we get intelligibility for everyone in the venue. Uh, and because the bottom enclosures were close to the audience, we needed to open up a little bit the cone of coverage. Uh, so this is why we uh, use the mix combination of uh, 70 and 110. Uh, another type of great application, uh, especially with a 90 degree now, it's uh, like a large event where you have your main system, say Kara, uh, say K2 or K1, for instance. Uh, it covers 90 degree of your audience with uh, K1 or 110 degree with K2, uh, which is granted with Panflex, so we can even reduce that if you want to. Um, but what it means, uh, what we had with uh, Kara sometimes is a little bit of a of an overlap, uh, too much of an overlap with K2 um, or K1 when used as a main system, meaning that on certain part of the audience, we had uh, an, uh, too much energy coming from and the K1 or K2 and the Kara 2 uh, and the Kara 1, excuse me, leading to interference, interferences, and maybe a, a bit too much interferences, leading to a, a change in tonal uh, perception, in sonic perception, and also change in uh, clarity and intelligibility. Um, now, because we can use the 90 degree, we have the ability to align perfectly the coverage of these two um, adjacent enclosures, and that really helps us um, aligning each system to each other and making sure that the audience is covered by one specific uh, source, if I can say. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, maybe an application that it's um, it's not uh, so common uh, today for everyone, but uh, which we believe will be uh, a great part of all our future is the deployment of an ELISA system. Um, here we're using a K2 main system for the central arrays. So we are uh, here we're dealing with an ELISA focus design, meaning that we are concentrating the low frequency content reinforcement to the central sources. 
and we are deploying ELISA uh, scene system with we completing the ELISA scene system with CARA arrays. Uh, the character arrays will give you the ability to uh, pro pro to project the intelligibility in the very same fashion as you do with K2 and with the similar entertainment angles. Uh, but you do not require the bandwidth that you use with K2. Uh, you do not require the low end capability that you uh, have with K2 as a central enclosures, but you need something that we produce identical type of sonic performance in the rest of the um, bandwidth. And that's exactly why Kara2 is, uh, is one of the best companion for Kara2 in, in this type of uh, configuration. And also the 110 degree with the great stability um, and hence the ELISA zone, if you will. We, you need something that covers as wide as possible to be granted with the largest ELISA zone uh, as possible. Um, for those of you who want a bit more information about uh, ELISA, focus or why designed about uh, deployment and uh, physical deployments of line sources in uh, ELISA design. There are again webinars on that that are posted on our channels, so don't hesitate to uh, have a look at that. All right, so I just want to maybe uh, rephrase a little bit uh, some of the things uh, quickly into three different sentences that really highlights the new benefits of uh, CARA2 and, and uh, in very short words. And that would be the evolution, CARA2 is the evolution of a best-selling CARA product uh, with Panflex for enhanced flexibility, adaptability. You can now adapt your coverage to your linear geometry or to your needs. Uh, added SPL and throw capability for increased performance compared to uh, CARA 1, but also compared to other products in the same category of product. And a four-in-one enclosure for optimized inventory and cross-rental uh, capability as well. So you have the ability in one enclosure to do four different patterns, four different coverage patterns to optimize your inventory to your inventory management um, and to upgrade your CARA into CARA 2. All right, thank you everyone. Um, Scott, there's uh, maybe one uh, quick words you want to add to that, or maybe we can take yeah. questions. Yeah, Germain, there was two questions I thought you could answer probably uh, really easy. Obviously, um, everyone is really seems to be excited about the upgradability of their current inventory. Um, we have just started shipping Kara 2 uh, in the last weeks, I think, which is uh, really exciting. So around the Correct. world, the first deliveries of brand new Kara 2 are available. But uh, can you remind me, when do we expect the upgrade kits being shipping? Uh, do, you, do we have a timeline on that, Jamal? Yeah, so uh, the idea is to, uh, um, well, in, in quick words, maybe we can say we uh, give a little bit of head start <laughs> for Kara 2 compared to the uh, upgrade kit. And the uh, upgrade kit will be available about six months later uh, after the CARA 2 shipment. So uh, I would say about, um, yeah, but so the five to six months from now, I think, counting from now. Yeah, I think uh, I think our target is in the fall, uh, assuming no new complications thanks to COVID-19. Um, Obviously, yeah, shipping. this all depends on this current situation. And, uh, but we're, uh, I think we're um, keeping on the right track. Yeah, and then another question was, someone wanted to know if, um, if uh, with, pan flex and auto splay and auto filter does sound vision take into account the changes uh, of all those parameters and, and is that updated um correct sound vision takes into account this is a uh, one very important aspect of designing a system is to know um, uh, to be able to simulate its uh, correct behavior and characteristics into uh, a real application as close as possible actually and uh, and we believe that sound vision does that great uh, already but it was uh, important to implement that into uh, into sound vision so that one can use the 70 degree preset, the 110 preset, and then decide to apply the auto filter uh, actions uh, onto that. So uh, so that you know exactly what you what you would obtain in a real life situation. Yeah, and the only restriction that uh, people should be aware of is obviously we have a specific preset for each of the panflex settings, right? And that preset helps optimize the polar response. Um, and of course, the, the settings required to get the, the optimal behavior of each of those settings. And that's quite a powerful function. So within Sound Vision and LA Network Manager in your design, you need to have uh, an amplifier and DSP resource, i.e. a channel or a circuit of an amplifier for each setting. So if I have eight Kara 2 and I have two boxes per LA4X, that means I can switch the 
hand flex setting for every two boxes. That's what's what will be authorized. Um, so that that might uh, functionally weigh in your design, but you guys can then decide the pros or cons of each possible scenario and see what the best solution for your particular event is. Um, yeah, exactly. And if you use uh, the possibility to use NA4X or NA12X in that matter, it really helps. Into so you want to um, have a little more amplified controllers, but we find uh, the possibilities into uh, um, pairing two enclosures for output channel of NA4X or pair of output channel of NA4X, which gives you more uh, capability into uh, when using your auto solvers, but also using Penflex. Uh, or you want to choose the LA12X uh, to pair more uh, CARA, so you can pair up to three CARAs uh, on the, a pair of output channel of LA12X, which gives you maybe a, a better uh, cable management, but reduces the, uh, the optimization that you could have uh, with the auto solvers. Exactly. Well, um, Shimon, I think this was great today. I hope everyone was able to learn a little bit more about CARA 2. Um, obviously, if you've ordered it, uh, it's hopefully coming and arriving soon. Um, it should be just in time for all of us to get back out to doing more shows. So um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Jamal, great job as always. Uh, if you haven't already and you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to hit subscribe below and uh, you'll get updated on all of our uh, new videos. We're publishing uh, daily webinars uh, multiple days a week. Um, so please don't hesitate to join us. Uh, Jamal, great job. Thank you. It's great to see you. Um, I hope to see you soon in person and bring you some Canadian peanut butter and uh, you can bring oh, me a baguette, a baguette from Lyon. Uh, Josh, uh, Arno, Martin, Sergey, um, thank you guys for joining us as well. Everyone, please be uh, be safe, be healthy. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow if you're joining us live. We're going to talk all about the sum design of the Hollywood Bowl. And uh, everyone, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everyone. See you soon. I hope. Bye, guys.